Sal Pal Antonio on a Sal Pal Friday is back today to recap uh, what a sad performance by the Philadelphia Eagles last night. The Philadelphia Eagles last night, again, offensively, uh, I give Nick Sirianni an F-minus last night, Sal. And, of course, uh, they lose that game. It's only by six, but it almost felt like it was a 3-4 touchdown differential in that game. They never really felt in it. And as you emailed me today, what a sad performance, Sal. F-minus, Mike Gill. F-minus, you're grading on a curve. <laughs> F-minus. I've never given – I don't know that I've ever given an F-minus out before. He got one last night. Yeah, you know – So let's look at what has to happen in the next couple of days. And Nick Sirianni just held his press conference, and he said, we know we have some processes in place, and we're not going to change anything. That was actually more disheartening than the game last night. If you think after last night that you don't have to change anything, then you're not paying attention. Um. Is he allowed to change anything? I think that's the question that people are asking. You know, we had that report that, you know, Lori wasn't happy. They won the game, but they didn't even run the ball enough. Is this guy basically being told, this is the offense we won? It was he hired and is he brought here because this is the offense that Jeff Lori, Howie Roseman, and the Philadelphia Eagles want to see? Yes. So that's one. There's a mandate to throw the ball. But Michael. There's a mandate to throw the ball, but <clears throat> you definitely don't want to run the ball one time to a running back in the first half on a Thursday night football game when Tom Brady's on the other sideline. I mean, you just that that's just malfeasance. So he's a wide receiver uh, by training. That's his background. And, um, you know, but he also learned – to have a running game from Frank Reich in in Indianapolis. He saw what Frank Reich did in order to resuscitate Phil Rivers' career. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of shocked that, A, it's come to this, and, B, they don't feel like they need to change. You're getting a lot of – I mean, I'm watching Nick Sirianni's press conference last night. I did not see it today, uh, but last night after a game, very Andy Reid-ish. Got to do a better job, got to do a better job, got to put guys in better positions. Um, So you're hearing that we got to do a better job, and obviously we're not seeing that offensively right now. How long of a leash does Nick Sirianni have when you're starting to hear it all over the place? I mean, you heard it on uh, Ryan Clark this morning with uh, on Get Up. I mean, he says, you know, this offense is trash, essentially. Uh, you know, you had Seth last night on the post game there. This is a high school offense. You know, how much yep. when you start to hear buzz like that from all over the place, that how long is that leash for, for your head coach who is getting uh, – he's not getting very good reviews right now. No, he's not. But I think even more troubling, Mike, is the comments by Jordan Mailata after the game that, you know, the team adjusted, but he wished that they adjusted a lot earlier in the game. That's, you know, Jordan Mailata, <laughs> <clears throat> I've met him. He doesn't, he's not a critical man. I mean, he, he is very close to the best, very team oriented. Um, that that's not his personality. And for him to say something like that, it really tells you, I think there's an undercurrent of what are we doing here? Mm-hmm. If a guy like Jordan Mailata would say that, you right, know, I'm, they did make an adjustment to run the game, run the ball more in the fourth quarter, but right. boy, it was way too late, way, right. way too late. So I think going forward, what they have to do is really clear. They have to redefine the offense. They have to say the identity of this offense is going to be Miles Sanders and that Miles Sanders is, you know, proven to be our most experienced and productive offensive player. And we're going to run the offense through him. Now Jalen Hurts is learning. He's learning to play the quarterback position at the NFL level. So let him learn and use Miles Sanders to be the guy who is the defining player on offense. You know, uh, losing Zach Ertz or trading Zach Ertz, I I never liked the idea of trading Zach Ertz. You know, he's got experience. 
He knows how to play the game. Has he lost a step? Yeah. But I think, as he proved last night, he can still be productive. He had a touchdown catch. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm saddened by the fact that they traded Zach Gertz. Yeah. I, I really think he was one of the good guys of the, of the team and of the NFL. Uh, he seemed sad as well uh, last night and obviously today when he spoke and, and uh, he's moving on to Arizona. Today, Sal Pal, uh, <clears throat> Nick Sirianni was asked if he, you know, the identity. He says, now, do we know 100% what our identity is? No. I don't actually think anybody in the NFL knows 100% what their identity is right now in game six. Is that accurate? Are teams not sure who they are, or is uh, it just the Philadelphia Eagles? You say their identity should be Miles Sanders. He says we don't know what our identity is, but neither do other teams. Is that accurate? No, of course not. It's a silly answer. Baltimore's identity is Lamar Jackson. The Chargers' identity is Justin Herbert. The Bucks' identity is Tom Brady. The Kansas City Chiefs' identity is Patrick Mahomes. Okay. So the teams that are struggling to find their identity are the teams that are struggling. But, you know, the answer to the question is not what is 100% of the identity, but what is the definition of your offense? Because right now Mm -hmm. it doesn't have one. And when you have experienced people like Seth Joyner, like Ryan Clark, like Hall of Famer Ray Didinger last night on the postgame show. Uh, like Rob Nikovich, I just watched him on Max Kellerman. All saying the same thing. You know, these are people who really know the game. And Greg Cosell and Matt Bowen on the matchup show. Uh, you know, these are guys who study film, know the game. And it's not a question of criticism, right? It's a question of analysis, objective analysis. So you don't have to have a hundred percent, you know, complete definition of what your identity is, but yeah. you ought to have a pretty good idea, right? Like, I, you know, we're we're all in life struggling with a hundred percent of our identity, but we at least know what we're doing. And last night, offensively, Mike, I I, I hate to say it, but boy, they just didn't they just didn't know what their identity was throughout the game until they figured out, oh. Well, if we give it to Miles Sanders and, you know, he averages 6.2 yards a carry, um, we can climb back in this game. Well, you know, you should have done that in the first quarter, Mike. Yeah. Um, Ryan Clark, by the way, said the problem isn't Jalen Hurts. The problem is the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, so is it – how do you get a read on who Jalen Hurts is if this is what you're handing him? I mean, is it fair? Are they giving – Jalen Hurts a fair opportunity to show them, or do they say, no, we want to put all this on your lap because this is who we want our quarterback to be. We want our quarterback to be able to handle all of what we're throwing at him. Right. So Jalen Hurts is a work in progress, right? This is his first year as a full-time starter. He's just finished week six. He had four starts last year. He's got 10 starts. He's a work in progress. He's learning on the job, but the way young quarterbacks should learn. Look at Ben Roethlisberger, great example. Ben, in his rookie year with the Steelers, went to the AFC Championship game. He only averaged between 20 and 25 passing attempts per game. The identity of that team was Jerome Bettis, was running the football. Mm -hmm. That was the identity of that team. The identity of that team was running the football, and having a veteran wide receiver like Hines Ward and playing defense. Now, what you and I haven't even discussed right now on this call, the problems on defense, which in my view, Michael, are much, much, much worse. Much worse. Much worse. I I watched that defensive line struggle to get to Tom Brady. They didn't sack him. I think they touched him once in the game, never knocked him down, not once. And that's because Jonathan Gannon refuses to blitz. It's a four-man rush. Javon Hargrave and Fletcher Cox were struggling. Both of them were being double-teamed at times. Brady was getting rid of the ball so quickly to underneath routes. Did you see that stat I had in my piece on SportsCenter last night? 19 19 of 20, Brady was. 19 of 20 
on passes of 10 yards or fewer. Yeah. Completion rate. Mike, if you and I played catch right now in the parking lot of your radio station, I guarantee you we would drop more than one pass. <laughs> I got good hands, Sal. Not- and I saw you throw the ball in Buffalo a couple weeks ago. You could chuck it. <laughs> Mike, but I'm just trying to make a point. Yeah. It's when you got guys climbing on you in an NFL game, it's really hard to, to, to complete 96% of your passes, okay? Yeah. It's just really hard, 96.7. So Brady adjusted. He saw that the, the Gannon was playing split safety deep, rushing four. So what did he do? He threw the ball underneath. Yeah. Just like Garoppolo did in the opener. Yep. When Garoppolo went on two 90-yard drives. We, you and I talked about it after the game. No, they're going right after Singleton. There's no doubt about it. They're trying to use uh, Taylor. Got more snaps last night. He's just obviously too raw and green. Uh, those linebackers are getting targeted week in and week out. And, look, the defense, I thought in the second half, but I felt like Tampa Bay almost felt bad for Philly and just almost, like, kept them in the game. <laughs> so another person texted me. You know, I, I just don't – obviously, I don't believe that, but it certainly did look like that. Right. I, I, I joke early, and I, look, I, joke, I said it's almost like Fox said last night, hey, can you please keep this game close? Uh, yeah. The fourth down, they go for it for no reason, and it keeps Philly in the game. Philly actually scores, goes for two for no reason other than to uh, yeah. maybe appease the people here at the FanDuel Sportsbook, which is where we are today. And, you know, and then the taunting penalty. I mean, you know this. The NFL is putting an emphasis on that, but is that really what they want called, that call right there? That was terrible. That was an absolutely terrible call. Yeah. Terrible. Jannard Avery, you know, you're not allowed to jaw at a guy. Right, exactly. Come on. I mean, did he throw his finger in his face? Did he spike the ball on the sideline? Come on, you can't jaw at a guy? Right, exactly. What are we doing here? Come on. That was that was bad call, bad time. You know, if they don't get that call, maybe the Bucks have to punt it. Maybe the, maybe maybe the Eagles have another shot. But, you know, it's unfair. But, you know, I'm looking at the final individual statistics, Mike. Zach Gertz led the team in targets. He had six targets. He had four catches. He led the team in catches. He had a touchdown pass. He's the only one that had a touchdown catch. Mike, you traded him the next day. Yeah. I, I don't understand it. He had, he had – Six targets. He led the team in targets. Yeah. Well, I will contend something you said, Sal, is, you know, look at the identities of these teams. Baltimore, Lamar Jackson. Well, they also, they run power. They have two tight ends. I mean, this guy walked into a room. If I'm looking around at the talent in this room, I say, I got a running back. I got two tight ends. I got a really good offensive line. I got young receivers. Isn't this a team that should be running using the two tight ends, power, play action a lot. They have a play action offense of, of skill set. Without a doubt. <clears throat> and here you have Rieger and Smith targeted seven times in the game and combined two catches combined against the secondary that had guys off the street. Mm-hmm. Guys off the street. Guys off the street. They had practice squad players playing once Richard Sherman went down three quarters of their secondary was a second team or worse. And you had these two first round picks, Rager and Smith with seven total targets, two total catches in the game with no touchdown passes. Now that's a function of one design two execution by the quarterback, three execution by the wide receivers. And this guy Sirianni is a former wide receiver who's a wide receiver's coach. I mean, and that is his specialty. And you're playing against the secondary that my Lord was decimated by injuries last night. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Mike. It's, it's, it's inexcusable, honestly. So they have a long time now to prepare for the Raiders. Um, do you anticipate changes or tweaks or this is who they are? Well, I don't know if I anticipate it. I hope that they change. I hope that they change. Vegas, next Sunday, 
right here on 97.3. ESPN Vegas has their own problems going on. Obviously, we'll see how that affects the way they play on Sunday against Denver. They'll play. They'll host Philly uh, next Sunday, and you can hear the game right here on 97.3 ESPN. Zach Ertz, before we run, uh, do you have a Zach Ertz story, encounter, something that stands out from his illustrious career? He's the best tight end in the history of the franchise, 116 Uh, receptions, single-season record, 15 catches in one game. That's a record as well. Uh, He will someday be in the ring of honor, I would imagine. Got to be in the ring of honor. Made the most important catch. I mean, we love Philly Special. I named my book after it. (laughs) Philly Special is, in my view, you know, the greatest play in Super Bowl history. But if you're looking at greatest plays in Eagles history, his catch on fourth down. And, he, he, and his catch of the go-ahead touchdown. I mean, Zach Ertz, top 10 Eagles players all time, Mike? Wow. Wow. Now that will make me have to think. I might have to do a blog post on that. Thank you for the idea. South Zach Pelham. Ertz, top 10 maybe all time? Got to – I mean, I mean, when you put in the fact that he had two of the most important catches – in franchise history and helped lead the team to its championship, its only Super Bowl championship, and was is the greatest tight end of all time in team history. Mm-hmm. Mike, I, I mean, I'm making a pretty good case for Zach Ertz top 10 all time in franchise history. I have to think about that. That's a uh, pretty interesting statement there. By the way, for the people texting in, Zach Ertz got traded for a fifth-round pick and a corner uh, from Arizona, so he's going to Arizona. All right, Sal Palantonio, of course, uh, Johnny G and the Burger Realty team in Ocean City. It's a great weekend down the shore. We've got beautiful weather. It's been beautiful. These uh, fall seasons, come on down the shore and see us. And, of course, uh, every Friday here for a Sal Pal Friday. We'll be pounding it up next week for Eagles and the Raiders out there in Vegas. I'm over here at the Sportsbook, Sal. I should have hit that game last night. You told me six and a half. Bang, they nailed it, six. I don't know how they kept that game within six. That's amazing. (laughs) That's a miracle last night. Mikey, never bet against Uncle Sal. <laughs> All right, Sal, have a good Friday, man. Okay, but South Pal Friday here, Sports Bash Live, ninety-seven three ESPN, the free mobile app. Download the app to your phone, Google Play, Apple Store. That's where you get it. You can hit us on the go. 